Okay, I had a student had a question on uh, how to how to compute this, uh, how to work out this problem on chapter eight, and uh, it's basically how to check calculate the the return of a portfolio and the risk of a portfolio, and the risk you use standard deviation and finance uh, standard deviation or variance of your returns as your risk, and uh, Expected return is your reward, right? So you it's risk and reward the higher the ri the risk the higher you, you should get a return So those are directly directly related. So anyway, um, this is a little bit weird to calculate uh, So let's just go ahead and I'll work this problem out with you. So it, it uh, basically it came from It came from uh, this program here a CEPI um, and uh, so I just pasted it in here and let's just go ahead and, and put in the put in our givens so our givens are uh, so we have stock a or stock one and we have stock two and the expected return I guess we could do it like this expected uh, return uh, for stock one is seven percent and the expected return for stock two is ten percent I guess I make that a two I have the room dark so I'm not seeing my keys very good sorry about that um, and then we have uh, the standard deviation uh, Let's go ahead and just insert the symbol for standard deviation just so we have a little bit of clarity here. So standard deviation for stock uh, 1 is 29%. And the standard deviation for stock 2 is 22%. And the correlation coefficient is a negative 0.33. So let's go ahead and put the symbol in for that too. That's usually row is what we use for that in most statistics books. And that's a, a, a minus 0 0.333. So, that's, so in other words, when one stock goes up, the other one goes down. So they're inversely correlated. Um, that might, and uh, So then we have the weights. The weight, sometimes that's called X, we'll call it W for weight. So we have 60% in stock one. And you just go equals one minus 60% in stock two, because they have to total, they have to total, uh, what do they have to total? They have to total 100%, right? Um, so that's basically what we're given. And we want to find. Number one, we want to find uh, the standard deviation of the portfolio. So we want to find, uh, let me go back to insert symbol. We want to find the standard deviation okay, of the portfolio. Okay. Um, so for a solution, So there's a form, there's two formulas you use to find the standard deviation of portfolios, and uh, uh, either, either use the correlation coefficient or the covariance. Um, so in this case, we were given the so so the the correlation coefficient times the standard deviation one times the standard deviation two is equivalent to the covariance between the two. So you can use these three items, or you can use this. So depending on what you're given, so if you're given a covariance, you would use this. Or if you're calculating the covariance, you would use this formula. But anyway, so we, we're going to use this top formula. So it's going to be equal to the square root of the weight of 1 squared, which is this right here, squared times uh, the variance of 1, which is a standard deviation of 1 squared, 
Um, and then you're going to add the weight of 2, and you want to square that. And you're going to multiply that times the, the variance of 2, which is a standard deviation of 2 squared. And then you're going to add 2 times the weight of 1 times the weight of 2 times the correlation coefficient times the standard deviation of 1 times the standard deviation of 2 and then close the parentheses. So normally normally you can put this, this in percent so we can go like this 16.71%. So let's go back to the back to our program and we'll put in a uh, 16.71% uh, Okay, so I forgot that. I guess I should have done it. Uh, let me take it out one more place. I'm going to go Control C to copy this. Control C. And this is pasted in here. It's probably easier. Control V. Try again. Control V. And that's the answer. Okay? Um, so now they want the expected return of the portfolio. And the expected return. So let me just move these move this down. So part two, we want to find um, the expected return of the portfolio. Okay, and let me let me subscript this P. So for part two, the expected return is really easy. It's just the weighted average. So it's this weight times that return. Plus this way times that return. So it's going to be equal to the, you could use the sum product for that. Sum product of these and then comma these weights. Now it's important to, so this is also going to be in, in percent. Um, so remember the weight is if I had $1,000, $600 would be in stock one and $400 of my money would be in stock two. So it's just the amount of money we have invested in each one. Let's go ahead and copy this, and we'll go back, and we'll paste this in here, check it, and that looks correct. Okay, so that's basically how simple it is, right? Um, what's interesting, you can vary, you can vary these and see see how it looks as you vary the weights, see how it, how, how it affects your expected return and your and your. Uh, anyway, that's, these are the answers. Let me highlight them. We're done with the problem, but let me do one more thing here just to show you something. I'm going to move this aside. So I could do something. I could say, well, uh, I, I want to invest uh, 0%. Well, I'll say percent of money. I'll just say the weight of stock one. And I'll start with 0%. And maybe I'll go by 5%. And I'll go all the way down to 100%. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go, first I want to do the risk, which is going to be the portfolio, standard deviation. And then I'm going to do the return, which is the portfolio return. So I want to, for each one of these, for each one of these weights, 0% of stock one all the way to 100% of stock one. I want to see how that looks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something called the data table. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go insert. I'm going to go to data. What if analysis data table? And um, since this is a column, it's asking me what am I varying here? Well, I'm varying the weight in stock one, which is this one. Okay. And if I go OK, it's going to give me these. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to format. I'm going to copy this format because they're all in percent. And then what I can do, I can do a scatter plot. So I'm going to highlight these. I go insert uh, scatter plot, and you can see that. Uh, let me let me remove the title here, and let me add some. I'm going to insert some uh, 
I'm going to go to the chart and I'm going to go ahead uh, to chart design. And the, and the axis title is the primary vertical. Well, that's uh, that's the expected return of the portfolio. And the primary horizontal is the risk. Oh, let me try that again. Equals the risk. So you can see that, uh, and we could let's go ahead and highlight these something here. If I if I add a data label, so this is twenty nine right here is twenty nine percent seven percent. So that's a hundred percent in stock one, and up here on this end, that's a hundred percent in stock two. Right, zero percent in stock one. This is a hundred percent stock one, right? So, so in between here, you can see this 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 horizontal axis is the risk. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to zoom in on this. So I'm going to go format this axis. I'm going to make the minimum. See, six percent is. I don't want to waste all this space on this graph, so I can see. So I'm going to go the minimum as uh, 0 0.06. You can see this a little bit better. And then I'm going to also zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to say the minimum on this axis is 10%. Uh, 0.1. So now you can see a little bit better. Okay, so you can see that since this is risk on this, this axis, and this is reward on this axis, if you combine, if you diversify and combine some percentage of, of each one, you lower your risk and... Uh, and you still get a pretty high return. In fact, anything from here down, you wouldn't want to do because you could go straight up from here and you could get a higher return for the same amount of risk. Because remember, the risk is on this axis. So so this is called the efficient frontier. And uh, actually, from this minimum variance portfolio all the way up to here would be the only, would be, be where a rational investor would invest. So you'd never invest all your money in stock one. You would do some somewhere between here all the way up to here because like i say this is risk right so as you go vertically you wouldn't want to invest here because for the same amount of risk you could go up and get and uh, invest here and get a higher return for the same amount of risk because each vertical line would be a i hope that kind of makes sense so we could actually solve for this minimum variance portfolio so like what i could do i could go here to uh data all right uh, yeah let me go to uh let me get out of the chart. We'll go to what if analysis and goal seek. And I could uh I could set this um I could set this cell right here. Well you know what I'm not gonna use goal seek, I'm gonna use solver. So I'm gonna go to solver. If you don't have solver on your Excel, you could look, uh, go to do a YouTube search on how to turn on solver. So I'm gonna use solver. I'm gonna say I want this to be a minimum. By changing my weight in, in one. Remember, I have this as a formula. This is equal to one minus that, right? And so, I, so I'm going to add a constraint. I'm going to say this equals 100 percent. 100 percent is one, right? And then if I solve for this, it automatically solves for it. it says um, so. It finds this point right here. This point here is 8.807, and and uh, the re or the return is 8.807 and the risk is 14.413. So from that point up here, so so uh, and then it finds then it finds that you should have. Uh, let's take this out a couple places. I should have 39.78 percent of my money in stock one and 60.622 percent of my money, and that would be my minimum variance. Hopefully, I didn't go too far. I know I'm going way past what this problem is, but this is a very interesting problem, and actually. Uh, uh, Harry Markowitz won the Nobel Prize in Economics for this. So I just showed you what someone won the Nobel Prize in Economics for. So it is kind of interesting. So anyway, that's it for today. Remember, you just had to solve this. So I'm going to go Control-Z. Let's put this back to what it was. That won't let me. Will it? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. 40 and 60, was that what it was originally? No, it was 60, right? 60 and 40. 
All right, so that was the original answer, I believe. 8.2%, yeah. So anyway, hopefully that's interesting. So this, this is, this, again, like if you're a rational investor, you would only invest from here up. And you definitely wouldn't invest in just this one, right? Because you can go, if you're going to invest in just one, you might as well invest in this one. Because that has lower risk. It has lower risk and a higher reward, right? Now, again, this is based on historical returns, right? It's not, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. Anyway, my picture will come up here. If you like this video, subscribe to my video, my channel by clicking on the picture if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up. Give me any comments. That's it for this one. Thank you. Bye.